So it has been known for a long time that the interpretation of some is difficult for children, or at least they interpret it differently from adults. If they see a picture like this, in which three horses jumped over the log, and they hear the sentence, some horses jumped over the log, or some of the horses jumped over the log, they will accept this sentence as true, a true description of the picture. Uh, when they hear the sentence, two horses, or two of the horses jumped over the log, then about 35% of the children will accept it as true. Interestingly, adults reject both of these sentences. These sentences are logically true. Because if all of the horses jumped over the log, then it's also true for some of them. Or if three uh, have jumped over the log, then two must have jumped over the log as well. So why is it that adults reject these sentences? And why is it that children act differently? Well, uh, uh, human uh, discourse is uh, regulated by conversational maxims. And the maxim of quantity says that we should be as informative as possible. So in the case of scalar alternatives like some and all, or two and three and four, we have to use the, stronger, the strongest alternative possible. So uh, if an adult hears some, then he will implicate, he will assume that this is the strongest possible alternative. So some is only used when the use of all would be incorrect. So this is the so-called scalar implicature. Uh, as for children, uh, there have been various explanations why they act differently. So Novak uh, claimed that uh, the logical meaning of uh, these sentences is accessible to children, and they are unable to draw the scalar implicatures because they are pragmatically still immature. But this explanation doesn't explain why 90% of children accept the sentence some horses or some of the horses jumped over the log in the situation I showed you, and why only a third of them accepts two of the horses have jumped over the log when uh, the same kind of scalar implicature has to be carried out in both cases. Another explanation by Barner et alia, that children don't know that some and all are sc scalar alternatives, they are members of the scheme scale, but why? So our hypothesis is that some is ambiguous. In fact, it's not a hypothesis, it's a fact. In natural language, it's ambig in adult language, it's ambiguous. It has a partitive re meaning, the equivalent of not all, and it has a minus partitive meaning, the equivalent of a few. And our hypothesis was that children acquire first the cognitively simpler a few meaning. Uh, the not all reading is more difficult because it requires the reconstruction of a superset, a higher set of which the given set is a part of. So first I, I will show you that some is indeed ambiguous. Uh, the two readings of some arise in different contexts. I illustrate this. So look at 2a. Some mistakes in this manuscript are major. This some mistake means a subset of the mistakes. So this is the partitive sum. Now in 2b, there are some major mistakes in this manuscript. This sum is minus partitive, non-partitive. This simply means there are a few major mistakes in the manuscript. We can show the partitivity of the A example and the non-partitivity of the B example. So in the case of A, we can confront the subset, the given subset with the complementary subset. So we can say some mistakes in this manuscript are major, some mistakes aren't major. We cannot do this to the other, the non-partitive sum. There are some major mistakes in this manuscript. There aren't some major mistakes in this manuscript. This is nonsense because here some only means a few. Now it is the partitive sum which forms a scale with all. It's the partitive sum which can be replaced by all. We can say all mistakes in this manuscript are major. 
The non-partitive sum cannot be replaced by all because it forms a scale with many. So it's ungrammatical to say there are all major mistakes in this manuscript. So there are two scales involved and uh, uh, the typical test sentence, uh, some horses uh, jumped over the log. This is associated with the sum all scale by adults and by the sum many scale with the sum many scale by children. So again, our hypothesis was that children first acquire the few meaning of sum. We tested three age groups of Hungarian children, and the first experiment involved sentence picture matching. They, had to they heard a sentence with sum, in fact, the Hungarian equivalent of sum, and uh, there was a picture showing the partitive reading, the not all reading, and another picture showing the non-partitive reading, the few reading, and they had to decide which picture the sentence is about. So here is an example. Some swans are white, so in this context, the sum phrase is partitive, at least for adults. And uh, here, at the left-hand side picture shows uh, the not all reading, and the right-hand side picture shows the few reading. Or another example, some kids are bicycling. Again, the left-hand side picture shows the few reading, and the right-hand side picture the not all reading. And here are the results. 60% of kindergartners, 50% of first graders, and 40% and of third graders opted for the a few reading. And practically none of the adults did so. So these values are pretty close to 50%. So you might suspect that children were guessing. But in fact, they were not. So here are the proportions of the children who gave five or six identical choices out of six. So who answered really consistently. Among the kindergartners, 54% opted consistently for the a few reading. And then this percentage is gradually decreasing by age, and it reaches 0% among adults. And the, among the kindergartners, 29% opted for the not all reading, and this uh, proportion is growing gradually. So the majority of them were not guessing. So our conclusion was that indeed, for six-year-old children, a few is the default reading of some. It's chosen significantly more times than the not all reading. And remember that these were some phrases which are interpreted as partitive by adults. So they occurred in the partitive context. So our next question was, is the few reading of some the only reading for kindergartners and first graders for young children, or is it merely the preferred reading? So in the next experiment, we tested both types of some phrases, some phrases occurring in plus partitive contexts, and some phrases occurring in minus partitive contexts. And both types of sentences were matched both with not all pictures and with few pictures. So we had four conditions altogether. This was condition one. When the Nehain, the sum phrase, occurred in a partitive context, and the picture showed the not all reading. So for example, some donkeys are gray. And as you see, only a subset of the donkeys are gray. In condition two, we had again a sum phrase in a partitive context. Basically, in English, it means a unstressed subject, and the picture shows the a few reading, so some pencils are sharpened. In condition three, we had a Nehain phrase in minus partitive context, and the picture showed the a few reading, so the sentence was some apricots are growing on the branch. This is a stressed sum phrase. And in condition four, then some phrase occurred again in a non-partitive, minus-partitive context, and the picture showed the 
not all reading. There are some apples in the basket. So let's see the results. Uh, condition one uh, was the condition where the, the some phrase occurred in a partitive context and the, the reading was not all. So here we accepted, uh, we expected acceptance. And we also expected acceptance in condition three where the minus partitive some phrase was matched with an a few picture. So actually we expected that at least in adult language that the partitive uh, a, a some phrase is matched with not all, and the minus partitive some phrase is matched with the a few readings. Indeed, in condition three, we had very high acceptance. Almost uh, every adult accepted this, and most of the children too. In the case of condition one, the acceptance by adults was, in fact, uh, less than expected, but we got an explanation. So this is uh, condition one, some donkeys are gray. Here the some, is, some donkeys is partitive and the picture shows the not all reading, but the adults who rejected the sentence picture combination said that for them, some means a small subset of, not only a subset of, but a small subset of. So this sentence would be true for them if it sounded as follows, some of the donkeys are brown. So basically, uh, for adults, there was a significant difference between the acceptance of the partitive sum and not all reading and the FU reading and the minus partitive sum. So condition one and condition three and the acceptance of condition two and condition four. So they significantly uh, preferred condition one and condition three. For children, there is no significant difference between the acceptance of uh, the sentence picture combinations in any of the conditions. So it means that they are not sensitive to this plus minus partitive distinction of the sum phrase. Now, crucially, the former experiments, they all tested condition two. They always involved a plus partitive sum phrase, and they showed a picture with the a few reading. And of course, children accepted it, because for children, this plus minus partitive distinction is not accessible yet. So this is the explanation of the result. So, in fact, here is our conclusion. So in the case of the sentence picture pair, children are, give different results from adults because they cannot access the partitive feature of the sum phrase arising in this context. So children first acquire the non-partitive reading of sum and they tend to overgeneralize it for a while. So thank you. Thank you for the talk. So, questions? So, hi, thank you. So, I have a question about uh, the first experiment, where it seemed to me that 30% of the children uh, consistently chose uh, the partitive reading, right? Is, yes. it, is that higher than chance? So, are those kindergartners, for example, understand that reading? Yes. We have to conclude that uh, one third of them are developing faster and they have already acquired this distinction, this plus, plus minus partitive distinction. I, I think you produce some lovely evidence that there is ambiguity, right? between part of and non part of readings, and certainly that's going to be one part of the story. But I guess I'm a little puzzled by why at the end you're saying that we've only tested children priorly 
in the context where the partitive reading was correct and they've overgeneralized that and that can account for the full phenomena because it seems like there's a number of phenomena in the child scalar implicature literature that that's not going to account for. And, and here's some of the ones that occur to me, right? First, on the conventional story where we argue that it's either failure to access the alternatives or difficulty in calculating the implicature, you get an explanation for why you see parallel failures for other lexical items like and and or, for example. You point to the numbers, but I think there's a really simple explanation for the numbers where the upper bound is not created by scalar implicature. And, and our online processing data, I think, produces some really clear evidence for that in adults. The other issue, I think, is that with both um, adult online processing and with children, when you put them in clear partitive context like some of the, you still get the same phenomena happening where the children are less likely to make the implicatures. Um, then there's also the fact that there's a number of manipulations that make them more likely to make implicatures that wouldn't make sense if you just think that the issues are only having the partitive reading or bias for the partitive reading. So for example, if you look at their own production, right, in these contexts they consistently produce all. If they thought this was perfectly compatible with the partitive reading, then they would be able to produce some in those contexts, but their own production doesn't show that, right? Um, so I guess I'm not quite sure what the overall goal is here. If it's to argue that there is no deficit in scalar implicature in children, it just seems like there's way too much evidence already on the side of there being a deficit. So I'm not sure I heard everything, and I'm not sure I could memorize every point you raised. But uh, basically, uh, it's true that um, uh, pragmatic conditions affect children's uh, achievement. And in fact, pragmatic conditions also influence adults' achievements. So if you look at uh, these results, so if uh, this plus minus partitivity were the only factor influencing answers, then we would expect, uh, expect a 100% uh, acceptance by adults in condition one and three and 0% uh, in, in condition two and four. And in fact, we asked the adults why they ac uh, accept uh, uh, certain sentence picture combinations that we predict to be non-existent. For example, in, this, in uh, cases like this, so why do adults accept uh, uh, this picture associated with some pencils are sharpened, when clearly all of these pencils are sharpened, and they said something like, well, only those that are sharpened are shown in these pictures, the, the rest are put away or something like this. So, they, so there is coercion. Adults are capable of coercion. They imagine the superset and uh, the, the missing uh, complementary subset. Or, uh, uh, or in this case, they, so it's easy to ignore the apple that is outside the basket. So there is coercion, and uh, coercion is uh, helped by or affected by pragmatic conditions. And then, sure, it's, it must also be true that children have difficulties with uh, scalar implicature as such, because if we go back to this very first data here, here, in the case of the B example, two horses jumped over the log, or two of the horses jumped over the log, so these 35% of children, they must have difficulties with deriving the scalar implicature. I'm not sure if you remember all the points you raised. And inter it's interesting that uh, children make no difference. There was an experiment by Foppolo, if I remember well, comparing the interpretation of some horses jumped over the log and some of the horses jumped over the log. And apparently, children gave the same re uh, answers. Uh, so this doesn't mean anything to them, it also shows that they are not really sensitive to the plus minus partitive distinction at, a, at an early age yet. So unfortunately we have to move on to the next talk. Thank you again. And, uh,